Hello students. Hope all of you are fine. I am Vinita Gupta, Associate Professor of English, Government PG College, Sector 1, Panchkula. I am here to discuss with you some aspects of the novel and my topic will be covered in two parts. Today we will get some information about what a novel is, what is its history of development and what are its elements. Its forms will be discussed in the second part of my presentation. I hope that you will listen carefully and try to understand the details related to this particular form of writing. Students, we use the word novel in our day-to-day -day conversation and we mean by it something new. But here we are talking in the literary sense. Or we can say that we will discuss novel today as a form of literature. But before jumping directly to the word novel and its definition, let us try to understand what literature is. Students, it is very difficult question and it is nearly impossible to give one specific definition of literature. But we will try to understand it a little bit by understanding some of the basic characteristics of any literary text. Dear students, in every age, the critics and writers have tried to define literature and in varied terms, they have tried to describe it. Literature has been called as the mirror of society or a reflection of society. That is, it says that different historical periods are reflected in literature. We get information about economics, psychology, science, religion, politics, cultures, and social depth in the literary writings through the actions and speeches of the characters or the author's style of writing or his intent. For example, you can look at the epics Ramayana and Mahabharata. They present the panorama of society of that time. Literature has also been defined as the expression of writer's feelings. For example, the great romantic poet William Wordsworth has said that poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. So literature is a medium for a writer to express his thoughts and feelings. But another definition of literature is that literature gives an outlet to the emotions of the readers also and its basic purpose is to educate and to entertain that is it enlightens us for example you might have read the stories of panchatantra these stories were written for the purpose of imparting moral education to a king's son and all of you have grown up with the fairy tales these fairy tales have entertained us a lot. Some other critics and the modern critics, these are, they have said that the any imaginative, artistic and creative use of language is called literature. So we see that literature covers all the aspects of life. That is there, it is described in terms of context, it is described in terms of the writer's feelings or the reader's emotions or the language itself or the literature, the work of the literature itself, which is called art for art's sake. So we will see that literature is an all-inclusive term and it includes all that is seen around us. In fact, history of literature follows closely the development of civilization. Students, all of you must have heard the stories from your grandmother. You must have recited nursery rhymes in your play school. You must be watching movies. You must be have seen TV serials, soap operas, 
and you must be listening to the songs, different type of songs, or you must be viewing cartoon programs in TV. So I will say that you are very much into literature since childhood and literature is a part and parcel of every human being from the time of his birth. In the words of Roland Carter and John McRae, the writers of the book, The Rowley History of English Literature, the literature means, I caught, literature is an as old as human language and as new as tomorrow's sunrise. Literature is everywhere, not only in books, but in videos, television, radio, CDs, computers, newspapers, in all media of communication where a story is told or an image created. So you see that literature should have a story, it should have images created by the words or literature, we can say, is the imaginative presentation of life itself. Now, let us see in what different forms can the literary writings be. And these are called the different genres of literature. And literature can be written in the form of poems or short story, novel, drama, essay, traveler, comic strips, and so on. And we are concerned with the genre of novel. Let us try to understand what does novel mean. Students, novel is a literary form and there is also no clear cut definition of a novel. But novel can be understood by comparing it with other forms of prose fiction. For example, noveler and noveller. Novel word has been derived from Italian word novella, which is a little new thing or a short story in prose. Example we can take of Boccaccio's Decameron or the Human Comedy, which is a collection of 100 short stories and it was written in 14th century Italy. Another form of prose fiction is novelette, which is the prose fiction of middle length. For example, Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, which was written in 1899. So, novel is different from both novella and novelette in dimensions and magnitude. We can say a novel is an extended work of fiction written in prose. In a novel, we have actions, thoughts, and the characters interact with each other and all these things are organized into an artful pattern and this pattern is called plot. Students, plot can be of different types. Plot may be comical, tragical, realistic, romantic, fantastic or satiric. Every novel has a great variety of characters and the novelist indulges in the exploration of these characters. The story of the novel happens in some setting, but there is an atmosphere in a novel and this atmosphere is also highly developed. Now let us have a look at some of the major novelists of English literature. You can see the pictures of Jane Austen, Virginia Woolf, George Eliot, Charles Dickens and James Joyce. Now let us come to the rise of the modern novel. Students, modern novel has understood has been understood as a horizon, as an alternative to the chivalric romance. And what is a chivalric romance? Chivalric romance is a type of poetic or prose narrative which was prevalent in Middle Ages and early English literature. These romances deal with the stories of adventure and courtly love, of wandering knights. So, the first modern novel is said to be Don Quixote, which came out in two volumes in 1605 and 1615, and it was written by the Spanish writer Cervantes. The genre of novel is considered to have taken proper shape 
in early 18th century with the works of Daniel Defoe, Samuel Richardson, Henry Fielding, and Lawrence Stern. And the term, the rise of the novel, was first used by Ian Watt in 1957. He said that the novel came to be distinguished from the earlier prose narrative due to the rise in fictional realism in early 18th century of Augustan age, which was the age of prose and reason. Now let us have a look at some of the reason which were behind the growth of the English novel in 18th century. Students in 18th century, there was a sudden rise in the reading public and this public included especially middle class women. It was because of the spread of education. Another factor was the advancement in the technology of printing press in 16th and 17th century. So this increased the circulation of written text which was once a privilege of the elite, now these written texts became available to the growing population of readers, both working class men and women of all classes. Moreover, the expanded genteel readership, they had surplus money to spend on cultural pleasures. Another factor behind the growth of novel was the rise of periodicals like the Tatler and Spectator. Besides this, circulating libraries also grew in England, which made books available to everyone. <clears throat> so these were the basic reasons which were responsible for the growth of English novel in 18th century. Now, the greatest event of this period was the publication of Robinson Crusoe in 1719, which is said to be an extraordinary event in the history of English literature. Because of its sustained fictional narrative of great length and this novel, Robinson Crusoe, it recounted the experiences of an individual, Robinson Crusoe, who was placed on a solitary island with only a Bible and a natural word for instruction. And it made an account of an ordinary individual seem probable to the readers. Another major novel of the period was Gulliver's Travel, written in 1726 by an Irish novelist, Jonathan Swift. And this novel was a satire on human nature. Other milestones of the period were Richardson's Pamela, Henry Fielding's novels, Tom Jones and Joseph Andrews. Both these novels of Fielding were very much admired by the later novelist, that is the novelist of Victorian period. Besides these three novelists, there was Oliver Goldsmith who wrote Vicar of Wakefield and Laura Stern who wrote Tristram Shandy. After that, the later 18th century and the early 19th century, it is declared as the romantic period in the history of English literature. And students, this romantic period was dominated by the poets like William Wordsworth, Coleridge, Byron, Shelley and Keats. But even then there were two major novelists of this period, Jane Austen and Sir Walter Scott. Sir Walter Scott evolved historical novel while Jane Austen wrote the works which were critic of novel of sensibility and she is also called as a major figure which took part in the transition to 19th century realism. Her novels were basically women-centric, like you can take examples of Pride and Prejudice, Emma, Sense and Sensibility. They were dominated by customs, manners, conventional behavior, and habits of a particular social class. In this period, Gothic novels also emerged 
For example, Horace Walpole's The Castle of Otranto. We will deal with all these types of novel forms later on in our second lecture. But students, it was in Victorian era, that is the era which started after 1837, the novel became leading literary genre in English. And this age, the 19th century, saw a high development in the field of novel writing with the arrival of realistic novel and also the rise of social novel. This novel arose out of social and political upheavals which followed after the Reform Act of 1832. The major novelists of this period were George Eliot, Anthony Trollope, Charles Dickens, Thomas Hardy, and W. M. Thackeray. Let us have a look at the major factors which were behind the rise of realistic novel in 18th century. Students, these writers wrote as a reaction to rapid industrialization which happened in 19th century and these were a means of commenting on abuses of government and industry and also a means of presenting the suffering of the poor people and these novels were directed towards middle classes to help create sympathy and promote change in the society. Examples of this novel and this reaction against government and industry can be seen in the novels of Charles Dickens like Oliver Twist and William Thackeray's novel Vanity Fair. Major characteristics of these realistic novels were that the characters in these novels became more complex and they interacted socially and their interaction increased and characters underwent such experiences which are seen in everyday life. So they were very much closer to the reality of life of the Victorian era. Social structure presented in these novels is highly developed and these novelists wrote with a purpose to restore morality in society. With that, we move a major breakthrough in the field of novel writing. And we see that while we move from 19th to 20th century, we see the modernist tradition in the novel writing emerged. And there was a great experimentation in the field of fiction or the field of novel writing. The novels of 20th century, they emphasized ever more on minute and analysis and exposition of mental life of their characters. Or we can say that the action in these novels became more interiorized. And for this purpose, the novelists made use of new techniques like the point of view technique, stream of consciousness technique, interior monologue, expressionism, and in these novels we can see dislocation of time sequence. And because in these novels the writers try to explore the uh, mental horizon or the psyche of their characters, these novels were also called the psychological novels. The major examples of the psychological novel are Henry James, The Ambassadors, which was written in 1903, D.H. Lawrence, Sons and Lovers, written in 1913, and Rainbow in 1915. In these novels, we see the stream of consciousness technique also, and this technique was fully exploited by James Joyce in his novel Ulysses in 1922 and also by Virginia Woolf in her novels like Mrs. Dalloway and To the Lighthouse. Students, another major change or development in the history of novel writing came in 
the postmodern era. In this age, we see that a new form of novel writing emerged and this is called genre fiction. This is also called the popular fiction. This term is used for the fictional works which were written with the purpose of fitting into a specific literary genre in order to appeal to readers who were already familiar with that genre. Major examples of this genre fiction are science fiction, crime novels, detective novels, fantasy, horror fiction, inspirational fiction. These novels evolved due to the growth of mass marketing of fiction in 20th century. The major significant writers in 1930s and 40s were George Orwell, who is specially remembered for his satire of totalitarian state in his novel 1984, and Aldous Huxley, who published a dystopia named Brave New World. So this is a brief history of the development of novel. Now let us have a look upon the major elements of a novel. What are the elements which make a writing or a prose fiction a novel? So first element is the story or the events or incidents which is called narrative. This narrative or these stories they are systematically organized and this organization is called plot. Every novel should have characters or dramatis persona. Then a novel should have a setting, environment or locale. There should be historical time also. And every story revolves around a central idea. This central idea is called theme. The writer of a novel has his own distinct style of writing. That is, he has his own choice of words, sentence structures. This is called style. And the novel may be written in serious, comic or satirical tone. And the novelist presents in his novels point of view. So let us have a look at the elements of a novel. First element is narrative. Narrative is a story which has events, action, characters and their interactions. It may be in prose, for example, short story and novel, or it can be written in verse, like epics, like you can say Ramayana and Mahabharata. So these epics, they were written in verse form. Next element of a novel is plot. Plot may be defined as the logical sequencing or organization of the events, happenings and incidents in any literary work and this is done to achieve one particular artistic or emotional effect and the plot may be comical, tragical, satirical, romantic or, or fantasy. The traditional plots were organic holes. It means that they had proper beginning, middle and end. But in recent times, critics feel that the conflict in any literary text can never be resolved because such is the human life in reality also. So there is no linear progression in the plot of the uh, contemporary writers. For example, we can see the psychological novels which move freely in time and space. Plot can be of two types, simple plot and complex plot. In the plot, if there is no reversal in the fortunes of the protagonist or the central character, it is called simple plot. If the protagonist faces ups and downs in his life or her life, or there is any reversal in the fortune of the central character, it is called complex plot. Next element is characters. 
every story which is presented in a novel is full of people it is inhabited by people and these people are called characters these characters take part in the action of the story the central character in any work of fiction around whom the story revolves is called the protagonist and the opponent of the protagonist is called the antagonist now the characters can be of two types according to e m foster that is flat characters or two dimensional characters who doesn't show any growth throughout the story and who behave only in one single way they are called flat or two dimensional characters if the characters show growth during the course of action these characters are complex in nature like real human beings they are called round characters every story is told in a certain way this way is called the point of view the story the story may be told in first person point of view or it may be told in third person point of view third person point of view may be of two types that is the writer himself may be omniscient writer that is he may be all knowing or the story may present a limited point of view where a selected character becomes the center of consciousness and all the events come to the reader filtered through the perception of this chosen character that is we come to know about all the happenings in the story through the lenses through the eyes of this one character however the writers of the later period that is post modern age they and the modern age they evolved new methods out of this third person point of view and this is called the stream of consciousness technique another element important element is the setting setting students is the place and the time and the social circumstances of the work it is the background in which the story takes place and it includes the geographical location of the story and the period of history in which the story takes place it may be set in past or present or in some recent unspecified time and is set contemporary or in future for example in science fiction besides geographical location it involves the entire climates of beliefs habits and values of a particular region and the historical period so these are the basic elements of a novel we have discussed ton also now the novel form has various forms the genre of novel has various forms since its beginning the novel was written in different forms but some of those forms became obsolete that is outdated but their precursors are still to be found in some of the current forms of novel writing and as i have told you earlier students we will discuss these forms of the novel in our next lecture so this lecture we come to an end these are the references from which i have prepared this presentation to you and the important book here mentioned is a glossary of literary terms and by m h abrams every student of literature should have this book with him or her and another reference important reference for this presentation is the book prescribed in the syllabus of ba fifth semester of the universities of haryana the novel kanthapura which is edited by professor umeed singh professor pankaj sharma and dharman deepti dharmani so students you should consult these books and with that we come to an end to today's presentation we will meet again 
for the continuation is of this lecture and we will discuss the forms of the novel in our second lecture till then goodbye and all the best thank you very much